Hello everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. It's really lovely to have you here. So today's video is going to be me sharing how I got from the inspiration dress of my daughter's broderie anglaise dress all the way to my finished version which is currently hanging up behind me. So I thought it'd be interesting um, to talk through the process and how I got from one idea to the finished garment. Before I get into that, I just thought I'd share what I'm wearing, and I am wearing one of my um, sagebrush tops. So it's the Friday Pattern Company, I've got it here to show you. Um, the Friday Pattern Company sagebrush top, which has these really lovely voluminous sleeves, and you finish them with an elastic cuff. Um, and then it's got this frill along the top, um, it's got this frill along the front, and then it's got this tie back detail. And I'm wearing it with my recently finished Megan Nielsen opal trousers. And I did go for the wide leg version, but I've done the paper bag waist and it's got a belt on. So I'll stand up, but I'll put pictures in as always. So this is the top in this beautiful um, broadery anglaise fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine. And then these are the paper bag waist trousers. So you can see that lovely detail. Uh, they've got pockets. Um, and then yeah, the paper bag waist goes all the way around the back. I'll stand up just so you can see. They're quite wide legged um, and I just used a viscose that I got from Material Girl Laura but I'll put images in and videos of me wearing them so that you can see the full outfit together. So like I said I thought I would explain how I got from the idea of my daughter's dress that we bought from Zara all the way to my finished dress. Um, and just the process that I went through, I thought it would be interesting for you to hear how I got from my idea all the way to the finished garment. So, in one of my previous videos I shared that my daughter's got this beautiful dress that I absolutely adore. And I've been wanting to copy it for ages. Um, and it's this. I'll put pictures in of her wearing it as well. Um, it's got these beautiful ruffles on the sleeve and then it's got this ruffle detail that goes down the front bodice on both sides. So here, I don't know if you can see. It's got this ruffle that goes down here, and then it goes all the way around the back. It's got a ruffle that goes down the back. Now, this version has got buttons going down the back, and then it's got quite a square neckline. And I didn't want to do the squared neckline. I knew that I didn't want that sort of neckline on me. I much prefer a neckline like this. I much prefer a round neckline. Um, so I didn't want to copy all of the dress. I just wanted to take aspects of the dress particularly the things that I loved the most was the ruffle on the sleeve and the ruffle going down the centre front or the side panels on the front. So I knew I didn't want to copy everything. Um, I knew that I didn't want to copy the square neckline but I did want to take this ruffle on the sleeve and then the ruffle going down the panels on the front and of course the beautiful skirt which I absolutely adore. So I had a little thing. So usually when I'm thinking about pattern hack, I will see something that I absolutely love and it might be something that my girls have got, so a, a, you know, an item of clothing that I've bought for them. Or I might see somebody out and about wearing something and then when I get home I'll get my notebook out and I'll start scribbling things down. An example of that would be the other day when I was walking um, back from, so at the moment my eldest daughter's practicing going to secondary school so we're doing a lot of her walking to school and I'll meet her there and then we walk back so we were walking back from that and I saw a lady wearing this gorgeous jumpsuit like full-on jumpsuit very similar to the Nova jumpsuit actually with that scooped neckline um, down the front and the scooped neckline down the back it was a striped jumpsuit and it had stripes going down um, for the bodice and then there was cuffs on the bottom I think she might have had cuffs turned up and the stripes were going the other way. So as soon as I got home, I've sketched that in my notebook and I'm thinking about how I can make that work because it was a woven garment that she was wearing. Um, so yeah, that's another idea that I've got sort of on the back burner, ticking away whilst I try and figure things out. So I tend to sketch it out first. Now I'm not a brilliant drawer, my sketches are awful, um, but you know, they're ideas that make, make sense to me. So I sketched them out. So with this one, I sketched out roughly what sort of details I wanted to take from the dress. So I knew I wanted a neckline like this. Um, I knew I wanted ruffles on the sleeves, so I sketched the ruffles on the sleeves and I knew that I wanted ruffles coming down here. So I sketched that. Then I started to have a look at patterns that I already had. And I had a bit of a sort out of my patterns anyway, so they're kept behind me. Um, and I made sure that they were all in envelopes and they were all labelled. And when I was going through my patterns, that's when inspiration 
like struck. I knew because I wanted ruffles going down the front that I needed a pattern that had panels going down here. Um, just to make it slightly easier. Either panels going down here or a bodice that would be easy for me to chop and separate out into panels. Um, and when I was looking through my patterns, I came across the um, Kokowawa Crafts Honeycomb Dress. It's one of my favourite dresses. I've made quite a few of the variations. Um, and it's perfect because it is a panelled dress. I'm just going to find the line drawings for you. There's lots of different variations. So it is perfect because it's panelled. You can see here. So you've got this panel, these two front panels, and then you've got side panels. And then it continues to be panelled on the back as well. Now it's got a mandarin collar, which I knew I didn't want. I did not want a collar of any kind of detail. But I like the neckline without the collar. So that was the first thing that I did. I omitted the collar. Um, I didn't want sleeves that came down to here. I did want quite short cap sleeves. So again, I had a look at patterns that I've got in my stash that I knew would work and had the sleeve that was the right length for me. And my favourite sleeve is from the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress, but not the regular indigo dress, the um, extension pack, because I really like the sleeve length. It fits me really nicely. It's a comfortable sleeve. So I took the sleeve from the Tilly and the Buttons indigo add-on pack. That was the first hack that I made to the um, Kokowara Crafts honeycomb dress. Then, thinking about this panel detail, I thought it'd be quite easy to just insert a ruffle going from the shoulder all the way down to the skirt or the waistline. Um, and I was thinking about what patterns I had that had a ruffle that was the right um, depth for me. And the inspiration came from the sagebrush top because I really like this, like the ruffle from the sagebrush top. If I come a bit closer, you can see it's just the perfect width for me, uh, the perfect amount of ruffle. And I thought that that would be a great pattern piece to start with to go from the shoulder all the way down to the waist. So that's exactly what I did. So I just took the ruffle pattern piece from the sagebrush top and cut it twice. So you, the pattern piece for the sagebrush top you cut on the fold, so you end up with quite a long strip that you then fold wrong sides together and stitch and then sew in a line of gathers and that's how you get this lovely ruffle. So I knew that that would be quite a straightforward hack to do. So I took the ruffle from the sagebrush top, the short sleeve from the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo add-on pack. And then what else did I do? Um, oh, I needed a ruffle for the shoulders. So again, I was looking at patterns that I already had in my stash and the pattern that came to mind was the Nina Lee Park Lane dress because it's got this beautiful ruffle detail that is sewn into the shoulder head. Um, so I'm just gonna grab the pattern piece so that you can see because that was absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, I used the ruffle piece. This is the ruffle pattern piece from the Park Lane dress. And this, when it's, um, you cut it out twice and then you finish the edge, this long edge, and then you turn it over slightly and then stitch it so that your edging is finished. You insert the ruffle into the shoulder and then you insert your sleeve and then that is sandwiched together. So those were the hacks that I made to the honeycomb dress. Those were the pattern pieces that I borrowed from other patterns. And then onto the finished dress. So here it is. So as you can see, I achieved the ruffle on the shoulder. I've got the ruffle running down this panel and this panel. Um, I omitted the mandarin collar, so I'm just going to take it off the hanger so you can see, and I'll come a little bit closer. So I omitted the mandarin collar, and I just used bias binding, satin bias binding, to finish that neckline. And I'm really pleased with the finish, it, it's a really neat finish actually, if I hold it up. And then onto the back. Um, one thing that I absolutely love about the honeycomb dress is it's got a yoke detail which I think looks really lovely in this fabric. It's a really beautiful detail, because um, using the yoke, it's got two pieces of that fabric, so it really stands out as a detail on the back. Um, I've got the short sleeves, like I said, from the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo, and then one thing that I did decide to keep for the honeycomb, is it's got these really cute bow details that tie in at the skirt. And I chose to keep that because I really like that detail. And actually, having the tie detail means that the dress isn't hugely fitted across my stomach area because I've talked about that before. I do like to have a bit of wiggle room in that space just because my tummy bloats throughout the day. And having the tie detail means that there's a 
there's about four inch ease within the skirt area for both sides so it means that it can get quite roomy and it's a really comfortable dress um, the only other thing that I chose to do different for the honeycomb was I didn't put pockets in so you can put pockets in here and I was worried that if I put pockets in um, if I put my hand on the other side you'll be able to see that you can see maybe I'll hold it up against my trousers but you can see through and I was worried that if I had pockets either side that they would show through on the skirt and I just didn't want that to spoil the effect of the finished dress um, the honeycomb dress has got buttons down the front so the dress that I was inspired by has got buttons down the back but I didn't want buttons down the back I like the detail on the honeycomb where it's got buttons down the front so I kept that but I didn't insert buttons I used my prim snaps instead and I really like that finish that you get from the snaps so if I hold it up you can see um, it's almost like they're not really noticed you can't really see the snaps um, because they're a really good colour match and that's what I wanted I wanted all the other features of the dress to really shine through and I'm really pleased with the finish I'm really pleased with how the dress turned out it's exactly what I had in my mind um, yeah and I'm really looking forward to wearing it now I didn't choose to line it this fabric is very see-through obviously it's a broidery anglaise so you can see through it um, so I have to be really careful with what underwear I wear um, but what I'm also planning to do is get some different coloured vest tops and slips and then wear them underneath the dress so that you get a tiny colour pop from the different coloured dress um, slips and the different coloured um, vests that I wear underneath. So I'm really hoping that will be a really nice idea that you know if I get a green slip and a green vest top and I wear that underneath the dress then you get a little bit of that colour popping through. Um, so that's just an idea that I've had. Um, I will insert pictures of my daughter and I wearing our matching dresses. This fabric I got from Felicity Fabrics. Now I do blog for them, I do work with them, but the fabric for this dress I bought myself. And it's a beautiful broadery anglaise. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. It's a, a, it's a word that I struggle to say properly. Um, but yeah, it's got all these like circles. And then they're almost like stars or snowflakes. They're really beautiful. I really, really love the fabric. It's absolutely stunning. And as you can tell with this top, I've got a bit of an obsession with broadery anglaise at the moment. And this fabric was from Semi Sunshine. It's just such a pretty fabric to work with. It's really beautiful to press, really beautiful to sew. Um, my only worry with this dress is how clumsy I am when I'm eating. I get food everywhere. It's the same with this top, actually. So I'm going to have to like put a serviette or a towel down before I start eating so I don't drop anything on either of these um, but I'm sure any stains I'll be able to get out anyway but yeah I'm really thrilled with this so before I go I thought I'd just give you some information on the Coco World Crafts honeycomb dress you can make it in a dress or you can make it in a shirt I haven't actually made the shirt um, I've only ever made the dress and I've made a long sleeve one but I've also made several short sleeved and then I've also made um, some sleeveless versions which are great for the summer and you just finish the armhole with uh, bias binding which is a really nice it comes in sizes UK 6 all the way up to a UK 20 and in terms of measurements for your bust waist and hips um, a UK 6 is a 28 inch bust uh, 23 inch waist and 31 inch hips and then a UK 20 is a 44 inch bust 37 inch waist and 45 inch hips now my measurements put me in a 10 going up to a 12 yes yeah, so my bust is a 34 inch which would which would have put me at a size uh, UK 10 for the honeycomb uh, my waist is a 28 which would have put me in a UK 12 for the honeycomb and then my hips are a 34 35 inch which would have put me in a UK 10 um, I looked at the finished garment measurements to decide what size I was going to do and I really like it when patterns include the finished garment measurements because then you can work out how much ease there is there and you can work out whether you actually want to make the size that you fit into or whether you can go lower or higher. And when I looked at the finished garment measurements I knew because of the tie detail on the waist that there would be a little bit of ease around that area. 
so I went off my bust measurement and there's still a good couple of inches of ease uh, for the bust if I was to make a UK 8 and that is the size that I eventually went for and it fits me perfectly. Um, before I finish this video I will put it on and do a little twirl so that you can see what it looks like. Um, so for the finished garment measurements for a UK 8, the bust measurement is a 36 inch so I knew that there would be a couple of inches of ease around this area which is perfect for me. The um, waist there would have been a um, 9 inch ease so the finished measurements around the waist is a 34 inch so I knew again that would be perfect because of the tie detail I knew that having quite a lot of ease around that space wouldn't matter because I could bring it in with the tie detail and then the finished garment measurements for the hips is a 45 inch so a huge amount of ease there a good 12 inch ease so I knew that I'd be okay making an 8 um, so that is one thing that I would say about the Kokowawa Honeycraft dress if you're going to make it just make sure that you look at the finished garment measurements um, because like I said the tie detail that you include on all of them helps you have um because like I was saying the tie detail that you have on all of the different variations um allows you to have a little bit of ease so you've got a bit of wiggle room but then you can decide how um fitted you want the dress or the shirt to look by tying these deep the ties on the sides um so these are all different variations you've got shirts at the top with different sleeve options so sleeveless um sort of short sleeves and long sleeves and the long sleeves have got these tie details on the cuffs and then you've got the dress variations again sleeveless short sleeves and long sleeves and then you can have pockets in your skirt I just decided not to include them because I didn't want the dress to be overly fussy so I'm just going to pop it on so that you can see what it looks like um, but I hope that made sense um, if you've got any questions about how I made it please pop them in the comments box and I'll try my best to answer them for you so I'm just going to go and pop this dress on I'll be back in a second Okay, I'm back and I've got it on. I hope that you can see this um, well enough. But if I come forward, I've got the ruffle detail on the shoulder and then these lovely short sleeves, which I really like. Then I've got this ruffle that comes all the way down into the skirt. Then we've got the tie detail here. Where is it? Oh, let's just fasten it up. So we've got the lovely tie detail here and here and if I undo one actually you'll be able to see that there is a huge amount of ease here so when I tie it it brings all of that in like so which I really like it creates a really nice shape um, and then the skirt finishes I'm gonna have to stand up for you um, there's my knees it finishes just below my knees all the way around um, yeah, and then this is the, the button down from here all the way down and then I've got no collar but this lovely bias finishing all the way around the back. Now on my daughter's version, it's got ruffles that go all the way down the back as well. So that's the front and then it's got ruffles that continue all the way into the back. I didn't want that, I just wanted the ruffles on the front and I'm really pleased. The back finish is quite nice you just get to see that pop from the yoke which I really wanted to stand out so um, yeah this is my finished dress um, I absolutely love being able to come up with an idea and then create it from all the different patterns that I've got um, I'm not adventurous enough to try and draft my own patterns at the moment but I'm definitely looking into sort of giving that a whirl looking at what's already in my uh, wardrobe particularly for my girls actually, what is in their wardrobe and what can I copy and try and draft my own patterns from because I'm finding it really difficult, I think the age of them and children's patterns go up to sort of age 10 and then they stop and there seems to be a gap for the sort of tweens so 11, 12, 13, there seems to be a bit of a gap there for um, nice modern children's clothing um, and clothes that my girls like the look of that I can then make for them so if you've got any suggestions actually of where I can look for tween um, children's clothing patterns, let me know in the comments below because I'm really looking. I've got a couple of patterns that stop at the age of 10, which is a bit frustrating because Lola's going to be, well she's just turned 10, she'll be 11 next year, but Ruby's going to be 12 soon and she does like me to make her own clothes. Um, she likes to be able to pick fabrics and then get me to turn it into something, but I'm really struggling to find patterns that 
fit I'm her. really struggling to find patterns that fit her, but also patterns that she likes the look of, that look quite modern. Um, and I'd really like to try some new independent pattern companies that do patterns for that age range. So if you know of any, please let me know in the comments below, that would be great. Thank you so much as ever for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope it was insightful into how I go from getting an idea to the finished garment. If you've got any questions about what I did, please pop them in the comments box and I will try my best to answer them. Um, if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell so you're notified of my next video. If there are any videos that you would like me to do, let me know in the comments box. I've got a massive list of vlogs that I would like to film. I just need to carve out lots of time so that I can film them. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope whatever you're up to, you're having a lovely time and I'll be back soon with another, with another video. Take care. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.